guys and girls, in today's episode we're looking at a couple of very common mistakes especially young midfielders often make. So if you recognize yourself doing some of these things, hopefully I have some good advice for you. Now, everything that has something to do with being a midfielder is always about improving your ball control and technique. So I won't even mention those things anymore. But I do have some other key pointers that hopefully will make you think. Let's go. Number one. Fear of going forward. Very generically speaking, as a midfielder, you are the link between the defenders and the attackers. And your responsibility is to move the game from one side of the pitch to the other. Now, perhaps you, maybe one of your teammates, is struggling with this problem. They find it very difficult to find the confidence in themselves to actually give those forward passes. And while it's not necessarily a mistake, in the long run, you will make it very difficult for the coach to justify putting you on the pitch if you can't move the game forward. Now, if you realize you are indeed struggling to move the game forward, here are a couple of reasons why it usually happens and what you can do to fix those mistakes. First up, you need to realize that you can't let yourself get away with this in training sessions. If you don't push yourself to move the game forward already at the training ground, chances are you're not gonna be the different and better version of yourself when game days come. Now the biggest thing you can actively do on the pitch is not approaching the ball with your back towards the goal. Let's assume I'm attacking this way, right? I see so many young midfielders eagerly running towards the pass like this, looking into their own goal. You don't wanna do that because in order for you to actually move the game forward, you're gonna have to take extra touches, turn with the ball and then play the ball forward. Instead, you wanna Turn your body and face the goal you are attacking before you even receive the ball. It's extremely simple and looks like this. Bam! Right off the bat, you are in the mindset and the physical state to actually move the game forward, which is the problem we are trying to solve. Number two, slow decision making, aka getting the ball and then figuring out what to do with it. I had a great coach who once told me, the moment you start thinking on the pitch, you've already lost. What it means is that the best players out there know what they're gonna do with the ball before the game even starts. They have models, they have continuously practiced with the team. So when their left back is giving them the ball, they already have a couple of ideal situations and scenarios they might go after. Now, the problems start coming in when you don't know what you're gonna do with the ball when you receive it. You're gonna, once again, take more touches with the ball, you're gonna slow the game down, and in most cases, especially with young midfielders, is that they start panicking and they lose the ball. Here's what we're gonna do to fix these problems. Number one, your head needs to be turning all the time. You need to get into the mindset of looking left and right around the pitch all the time. So next time you're at the training ground, starting today, every five seconds, keep looking and spotting the different options so you are more prepared before you even get the ball. Number two, you need to understand your role and the tactics of the team in your sleep. As mentioned, the best players out there know what they're gonna do no matter the situation. They have those specific models they have practiced both on the whiteboard and on the pitch with their team. So you need to challenge your coach to let you know what are the different models you should be practicing and executing on the pitch. What is the ideal play for you when you get the ball from the left back? For example, in my past, it was usually getting the ball from the left back and turning the ball over to my right winger, making a great run. And then, if that's not possible, you move on to the next option. But you get the point. And lastly, number three, get to know your teammates better. And I want to use, as a great example, the lovely partnership between Lionel Messi and Jordi Alba. When Messi gets the ball at a certain area of the pitch, in the back of his head, he knows Jordi Alba is about to make that run for him to actually play the ball towards him. He doesn't have to think because in his unconscious mind, he knows his teammates so well that he can simply take the first touch and bam, play the ball. Get to know your teammates better. It can make a huge difference in your game. Lastly, number three, lack of discipline. And here I'm specifically talking about positioning and the defensive side of being a center mid. Now, 
Positioning and defending are usually very individual things based on the team you play for and what your coach actually wants you to do on the pitch. So I'm going to use very generic examples so you guys follow my drift here. Young midfielders are usually lacking those defensive qualities that come with the role of being a center mid. And the biggest thing young midfielders do wrong defensively is selling themselves out way too easily. They rush into those situations trying to make those heroic tackles and usually the attackers can just bump with one touch get past them. As a central midfielder it's crucial for you to know when to try and slow the attacker down so that your teammates have enough time to fall back and recover behind the ball and when to go for that tackle in order to win the ball back. But a lot of young players, hopefully not you, are selling themselves way too cheap with those ugh, sloppy tackles. You might also lack discipline in the sense that you are always eager to join the attack but while doing that you might leave your defense vulnerable for the next counter-attack that's hopefully not coming. And here's what we're gonna do to fix that. One thing young players don't do often enough is communicate with their midfield partners. As mentioned, I'm gonna use very generic examples and the generic rule of midfielders is that when one guy joins the attack, the other one stays behind to cover the defensive line. This is about taking responsibility. So make sure you communicate actively with your midfield partner at all times to figure out who goes and who stays. Also, as mentioned, you need to spend more time working on those one-on-one -on -one defensive situations. Like it or not, the role of midfielder includes so many one-on-one -on -one battles and scruffs in the center of the park and you simply need to get better at it. And being strong defensively is a huge advantage for you as a midfielder. Every single coach loves a player who can attack the ball, bring the game forward, but also take those heavy punches and defend well when the time comes. In football, there are not many things that are quick fixes. These pointers in this film will probably take you years to perfect. But if there was at least one simple thing you learned watching this episode, make sure you slap like on the video so we know to make more videos like this one in the future as well. Who knows, maybe for different positions as well. Also, if you enjoy videos like this one, you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the green bubble right up there. And with those words, I'm out.